An aggrieved spirit can be a powerful presence, and in this true account, the emotional energy of intense suffering during a lifetime caused all to run from the house it haunted. This is also the first authenticated multiple witness account of a haunting. It's unknown why the English lady Elizabeth Pennyman decided to take her two daughters to France to live temporarily just at the start of the French Revolution. This places the events around the year 1789. The Pennyman family were lucky enough to find a large furnished house for a low rent in the northern city of Lille. Here they settled with their entourage of servants and created a comfortable life. The first hint that there were any problems was when Lady Pennyman went to the local bank to cash a payment from her husband. He was the British politician Sir James Pennyman. When the bank manager paid Lady Pennyman a large amount of silver, she asked if it could be delivered to her home as she was planning to make some other visits. She described the house's whereabouts and then asked the porter if he would be able to find it. Strangely, he and everyone in the bank knew of the house. She then heard him mutter under his breath to the manager that it was the so-called haunted house. Lady Pennyman dismissed the comment as ignorant superstition, but a few weeks later was forced to remember the man's words. It was then that the Pennyman's housekeeper, Mrs Carter, who had come from England with the family, reported that two of the maids who had also accompanied them had given their notices to leave. The reason for their hasty exit was a nightly phenomenon in their bedroom of unexplained and terrifying noises. According to the young women, the noises could only have been caused by ghosts, reminding Pennyman of the porter's comments about her house being haunted. The housemaids were unable to be persuaded otherwise and returned to England within the next 24 hours. The mysterious sounds had apparently occurred in the room formerly shared by the two servants, which was well away from Lady Pennyman's part of the house. She and Mrs Carter proceeded to make a thorough inspection of every nook and cranny of the large building. The supposedly haunted room was situated below a large granary on the floor above, apparently then an important feature in all French houses. Pennyman and Carter inspected the long spacious upper room which appeared not to have been used for years and found nothing out of the ordinary until they noticed something in the corner. This was a large circular iron cage high enough to contain a grown man. On further questioning Mrs Carter claimed to have heard local stories about former occupants of the house and the possible use of the cage. Pennyman dismissed her comments as idle gossip and became determined to put the matter to rest. The speculation was upsetting her children and disturbing the running of the household. Lady Pennyman decided to sleep below the granary herself in order to dispel the rumours about the strange noises. The following night saw her bedding down in the servant's former room aware of the empty cage in the room above her. The first few nights were uneventful, until early one morning Lady Pennyman was awakened by a slow, heavy step pacing the granary floor overhead. The monotonous trudging meandered backwards and forwards for over an hour, then suddenly ceased. The next morning, Pennyman awoke with the opinion that there must be some way of getting into the granary from outside, known by another person. She resolved to discuss the matter with Mrs Carter. At that time, her son Charles was on leave from the Navy and staying with the family. He caused a stir in the formal household by dragging himself in late for breakfast complaining that he had been unable to sleep all night. He claimed to have had people knocking on his door and peeping into his room every half hour, asking him if he had put out his candle. 
he blasted his mother for telling the servants to check on him. Lady Pennyman was shocked as she had done no such thing and she was then concerned to hear from Mrs Carter that the household had descended into chaos. Every single servant was now vowing to leave the house. Mrs Carter suggested that her ladyship summons her friend, Mrs Atkins, who was a pillar of practical kindness and seemed able to sort out any problem. At Pennyman's written request, Mrs Atkins duly arrived in Lil with her feisty fox terrier called Bob in tow. Mrs Atkins was also a supernatural sceptic and secure in her own moral strength. She actually laughed at the family's paranormal take on the disturbances and, in full hearing of the servants, declared that she would in fact sleep inside the cage. She and Bob, an accomplished ratter, would lay any ghost to rest. A bed was then placed in the cage room, which was made comfortable for Mrs Atkins. She examined the room thoroughly for any hidden passage, then bolted and locked her door before retiring for the night. However, her self-confidence was short-lived. She was suddenly awakened by a loud howl from Bob, who leapt onto the bed and crouched down beside her, shuddering. The bedroom door slowly opened and a pale, thin, sickly-looking boy walked in, glanced at Mrs Atkins, then advanced to the iron cage. There he stood for a few moments in a posture of extreme misery before retracing his steps and leaving the room. More than ever convinced that the noises and visitations were part of someone's plan to drive the Pennymans out of the house, Mrs Atkins grabbed her lamp and rushed after him. To her amazement, she found that the door was locked and bolted as she had left it. However, on opening it, she caught sight of the back of the youth as he descended the staircase. She followed him down the stairs, but when the apparition reached the ground floor, he appeared to sink into the floor and dissolved into nothingness. Mrs Atkins promptly fainted. People emerged from rooms throughout the house as Bob's insistent barking raised the alarm. Mrs Atkins finally came around and described what she had witnessed. She was adamant that her friends ought not to remain in such nerve-shattering surroundings. She could not deny the evidence of her own eyes. The very next day, Lady Penniman asked her landlord to release her from the tenancy, which he refused, also threatening reprisals if she spoke of the supernatural events and thus damaged his property values. Before the family left Lil, Lady Pennyman found out the tragic story around the house and its bizarre haunting. A former occupant had imprisoned his nephew, a 16-year-old child, in the house. He had brought about the boy's demise with systematic starvation and cruelty. The boy was heir to massive wealth, and the uncle, who acted as his legal guardian, was wanting him done away with before he came of age. He found any excuse to punish the child and thought up the idea of the cage when the boy's resilience proved too strong. The boy was warned that the next time he offended his uncle, he would be imprisoned within the circular cage and there deprived of food and rest. As he drew nearer the age of inheritance, the boy's punishment became more brutal when he was subjected to two days of deprivation in the cage. Finally, the poor child's spirit and will to live were broken. However, his ghostly presence remained to haunt his treacherous uncle. It was rumoured that whenever the uncle entered the granary or cage room, he would see the figure of his unfortunate nephew collapsed on the floor and clutching the iron bars with glazed and staring eyes and half-open mouth. In terror and remorse, the uncle sold the house for a song and left Lil to pursue a self-imposed exile. The house remained permanently haunted, which was the reason for its cheap rent. 
It is rumoured to be a house called the Place du Lyon d'Or in Lille. This account has been popular over the centuries because it is one of few where there were multiple reliable witnesses to an apparition who were confirmed by all their families. The paranormal researcher Lord Halifax called the occurrence a highly compelling piece of evidence of the existence of ghosts and a reassuring hint at the prospect of continued existence on some other plane. <laughs>